Mm -hmm. Okay, so drawing out the mesencephalon, there's the pons, there's the medulla. Here's the cortex, here's the cortex, right? So this is the left, as if you're looking at the patient. And here's the right, okay? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna separate it here and just right down the middle, okay? So let's say we have a bigger pupil over here smaller pupil here. It doesn't necessarily look that differential, but just for the sake of doing it, I'm gonna do it. Okay, so, okay, so, we're going to make an assumption here at first and say that the bigger pupil is the problem. But here's the thing, right? This is either increased sympathetics here, or this is increased parasy parasympathetics here. Because parasympathetics constrict the pupil, sympathetics dilate. So it's either increased Increased sympathetics here, increased parasympathetics here. So essentially, the parasympathetics are not constricting the pupil, so the sympathetics are dilating it. Here, the parasympathetics are constricting it so much because the sympathetics aren't firing enough. So there is there aren't there isn't enough sympathetics here. There's not enough parasympathetics here. Now. The question is, if we want to say that the problem is that there is a decrease in parasympathetics, right, or an increase in sympathetics, then the problem is either coming from two places. Here, the brain on the left side, this is all left side, it's all the same side, or the pontomedullary area on the left side. Those are your only two places that this problem is going to come from. Okay, so if either of these are the problem, then it's very simple in how we look at it. We either say, well, if we think the cortex is the problem, then we're gonna try SSCP on the right side. And if that works, great. And then we try SSCP on this side and it makes it worse and we know that this isn't the problem, this is the right treatment for this. It is actually due to the left cortex. So then we can devise other treatments if we want. We can do saccades from left to right to activate the left cortex eventually. We could do right complex movements, right? We can do that type of stuff. We can do a whole myriad of treatments when we know that that is the part of the brain that works. And the reason we would know that is because when we activate this right side, the pupil improves and it's able to hold longer, right? Pupil holds longer, right? It may constrict more, not be so dilated, right? And so you, you change this fatigability essentially, right? So also there's the time to constriction, right? So remember, what are the three things we look for, right? We look for the, the observe the size, then we look for how long does it take to react, and then how long does it take to fatigue, right? So if all of a sudden the fatigability right? It takes longer to fatigue after we activate the right side, right? If the left pupil takes longer to, shorter to, con to constrict and longer to fatigue, that's a healthier pupil, right? So healthy pupil, faster constriction, right? 
and a longer time to fatigue, right? So now let's pretend neither of those really, oh, so if we thought that then it was this, right? Same thing goes, right? If it was two, that was that was right. If it was the brainstem, then it would have been the SCP on the left. And then it would have been, you know, you would just reverse those. Now you would do saccades. It essentially be this pathway. That is the problem rather than this one. The only difference in these two pathways is where you're starting, right? So now, you know, you may do a little more vestibular input here might be a little more direct. Cerebellar input's gonna be a little more direct. When you're going to, from over here to the cortex, cerebellar and vestibular input is a little more indirect, whereas saccades are more direct. Pursuits are more direct. Optokinetics might be a little more direct. So those types of things. So, but now what we say, now what we might say is that it's really not this that we think is the issue. Now we think it might be a lack of sympathetics on this side, right? So now we wonder, well, if sympathetics come from this area, which is where they come from, or below, right, in the spinal cord, but let's just say through here in the brain, and then parasympathetics come from this area, area or here, then we know that the sympathetics on this side just aren't working well enough. So we may say, geez, well, why don't we just try to activate this with sympathetic activity, right? And see if we can change the same activities, right, of the pupil, which is time to constriction and time to fatigue. Except there is a difference. If a pupil, if you shine a light in the eye and people go boom, and you let it go and it stays constricted, like super constricted and just doesn't let go, that's not necessarily a good parasympathetic system. That's actually an overactive parasympathetic system. So there is always a balance. When I shine a light in your eye, it shouldn't just go like this and just crank. It should just kind of hold. After a little while, it's gonna kind of fatigue a little bit. It might not blow right out. It just kind of pulses a little bit, maybe a little bit more. And after a while, it may fatigue, right? But if it constricts really fast and then just doesn't dilate, right? Doesn't expand, then that sympathetic, acti sympathetic activity isn't occurring very well. And so therefore we need to activate this area because this smaller pupil, right? Which is what the sympathetics do is constrict a pupil is not doing, I'm sorry, dilate a pupil is not doing its job. Parasympathetics constricting it, sympathetics dilate. Sympathetics in this case are not dilating. Does that make sense? Good. So let's recap a couple things. So if you look at the brain again, right? And then we want to split it, right? This is the mesencephalon. This is the pons. This is the medulla. This is the cortex, right? So the sympathetic system lives here, right? Otherwise also known as the IML. Those are the same thing, right? Lives there. And the parasympathetics live down here and in the cortex. Now we love the parasympathetics, right? They're usually the parasympathetics are usually the issue. So cortex is parasympathetic. These guys are para, and this guy is sympathetic. So we really only have to determine, we don't, we have to determine which level, but really what we want to look at is which side. That's why I draw this like this, because if I have a big pupil here, 
then if I'm assuming, which it probably in more scenarios than not, it's parasympathetic is the, is the issue, not constricting it, right? pupil, right? Lowers blood pressure and lowers heart rate, right? So this one dilates pupil, increases heart rate, and increases blood pressure, right? So we look at the pupil. We say that it's, if, it's, if it's parasympathetic is the problem, we now we have to determine now we know which areas of the brain are parasympathetic. It's it's either here or here. Now we just have to determine which one it is, right? Is it the cortex? So does does input from the right side to the left brain improve it? Yes. Well then it's cortex. If it's if input from the left side to the right brain improves it, then it was this pons area. Now the other things you have to look at besides pupil are which are really important is your heart rate and your blood pressure. Okay? So if your sympathetics were increased on your left side, right, which we're saying with a big pupil, right? So let's just, let's just say that the increased sympathetics on this left side, which means that the parasympathetics are not working as well, so we have to turn them back on, then you would have an increased blood pressure potentially on this side, increased heart rate you might see as well, and you might see pupillary increased size, or you might see a, you might see an increase in fatigability of the pupil, and you might see a slow or sluggish constriction. And if that isn't clear, I don't know what is. <laughs> Any questions from the gallery? Well, I have one. Yes. Okay, you. <laughs> uh, well, what about the, the sympathetic output from the spinal cord, like the IML happening there? How does that play in? It's nothing that you need to worry about, really. It's more like if I look at somebody and like their T1 area is problematic, yeah. then I might do adjustments differently and those types of things. Okay. But it's nothing like on your end that you have yeah. to really concern about. Okay. Yeah. So I think it's just, you know, important to look at. Basically, you're, you're looking at pupils, heart rate, and blood pressure. You know, whether they're higher or lower. You know, one thing we didn't talk about is if... Um, you know, if this, right, so here, here's an example, here's something to look at, if, if this pupil it was the smaller one, that was the problem, right, and we have the decreased sympathetics on this side, that could be because this parasympathetic output is too much, right, that's when you right. do the, the, that's when you do the gingerastic maneuver, um, you know, you either, or it's because the other side is weaker, right? Right. A lot of times something is overactive because something else is underactive. So this side of the pontomedullary is controlled or kind of regulated a little bit by this side. Okay. Right? I mean, in a, in a manner of speaking, it's not exactly direct like that. In this cerebellum, you know, the output would be too much to this. Then you'd have increased parasympathetics. You might see somebody who stands up and their heart rate or blood pressure drops. What you might also see is a smaller pupil on that other side. As those sympathetics are being inhibited, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, that would be on, on this side. My apologies. The smaller pupil would be on this side. So flip it around, right? So smaller pupil. Right. The increased cerebellar, you might have too much cerebellar input here, right? Or the vestibular or whatever. And that's activating this pond so much that it's it's inhi inhibiting the sympathetics and so then you get a small pupil
Yeah, that one's a little trickier, right? So that, that one's kind of saying, well, okay, if I, you know, because you might, how you might see it is like, you, you see that, right? And you, you see the big, right? You see the big pupil, right? And you think that the big pupil is the problem, right? You're like, oh, big pupil, that's more of the issue. And you do your SSCP on this side, right? And then you see the heart rate plummet and the blood pressure plummet when they come up to 90. And you're like, oh man, okay. That's not normal, right? Mm -hmm. If I thought their sympathetics were, uh, you know, their parasympathetics were failing, I might think that their heart rate and blood pressure would go up. But in this case, they didn't. They actually dropped a lot. So then you're like, oh, maybe the small pupil is the problem. So that's something we haven't really gone over too much, right? Yeah. Cause, but that's the, that's the reality. Okay. Yeah. But if your pupil's big, you're not really going to get that on this side, you know? Right. Unless, <laughs> it's the worst, Why, right? this is impossible. This is, uh, it's not impossible. You rewatch this enough times, it'll make sense, seriously. So let's say, you know, you do this. So you're not gonna get a decrease, you know, if, oh, I lost my trap, I lost my trap though on that one. What was I just saying? Are going with it. I have no idea. <laughs> Great. What I was trying to say, so this side, if we have those increase. So you wouldn't have a smaller pupil on the left side unless. That's what that is. Exactly. That is what I said. So you wouldn't have a smaller pupil on the, on this side. No, I think you're fine with that. So the right overactive cerebellum so like too much parasympathetic so it's dampening the sympathetic ipsal like uh, yes same the same side, side. Mm -hmm. okay yeah so. right because remember the sympathetics are just a chain right it right give you either big pupil this increased heart rate increased blood pressure but it doesn't matter where it's occurring right okay it can happen anywhere Okay, because yeah. I always felt like the cortex inhibited the mesencephalon, right. the pontomedullary inhibited the, mm. like the spin IML spinal cord, but it could go up and down. It can go up and down, yeah. Okay, it's not gotcha. necessarily that. Order of things. Yeah, okay. but I think, I think that the increased cortex, or sorry, the cortex issue might, there might be more of, of the big pupils due to the cortex on the same side than the brainstem. Okay. But there, it's not a, it's not always the case, so we have to be um we have to be Open cognizant mind. of that yeah yeah i think that's a pretty good start and we'll go over it again okay